Let's see how to do the in-order traversal of a binary tree using the recursive algorithm. So the idea is to start at the root node and then visit the left subtree in order, visit the current node, and finally visit the right subtree in order. So let's run through a quick and simple example to see how this works. So here we have a simple binary tree. So we start at the root node 1 and we going to visit everything on the left in order. So we're going to have now root 2. Again, we're going to visit everything on the left. Now 4, when we try to visit everything on the left, there is nothing there. So we can now visit the 4. In this case, we just print it. Then we visit everything on the right, but there is nothing there. So with that, we're done with the left of 2. So we can visit the 2 and move to the right. 5. We go to the left, there is nothing there, so we can visit the 5 and then move to the right, but there is nothing there. So we're done with the right of 2 and thus we're done with the left of 1, so we can print the 1. Now we go to the right of 1, 3. We move to the left, but there is nothing there, so we can print the 3 and move to the right. We go again to the left. 7. We go to the left, there's nothing there, so we can print the 7 and then move to the right. There's nothing there, so we're done with the left of 6, so we can print the 6 and move to the right. There's nothing there. So we're done with the right of 3 and with the right of 1. And therefore, the final output is 4, 2, 5, 1, 3, 7, 6, which indeed is the in order traversal of this simple binary tree. So let's see how to actually implement this. We're going to represent the node with an integer value and the address to the left node and the address to the right node. So it's a simple structure. We're going to have this function called inOrder, which takes the address to the root node of the tree of which you want to do the inOrder traversal. And we're going to return nothing because our goal is to just print the values. So let's think of the base case. The base case happens when the root node is null because this indicates that the tree is empty so there is nothing to traverse. So we're going to start by saying if root is null, we're going to return. But if root is not null, this means that we first need to visit everything on the left in order. Then we can print the value. And then we're going to visit everything on the right in order. And that's it. So let's quickly run through this code to see that it actually works. So again, we start with root 1, and we check is root null, root is not null, so we move to the left. We call in order, passing root arrow left. Now, the left of 1 is 2. So again, we check is it null? No, it's not null. So we're going to move to the left. Left of 2 is 4. It's not null. We're going to move to the left. But this time, the left of 4 is null. So this returns immediately because we hit the base case. So once this returns, we can print the value 4. This returns, we can print the value 4. And then we move to the right of 4. Again, the right of 4 is null. So this it's immediately the base case. So we're done with the right of 4. At this point, 4 returns and 4 was the left of 2. So we can now go ahead and print the value 2. And we move to the right of 2. The right of 2 is 5. 5 is not null, so we move to the left of 5. The left of 5 is null. So we hit the space case immediately. So once this returned, we're going to print the value 5. And we're going to move to the right of 5. Again, the right of 5 is null, so we're done immediately. So we're done the right of 2. And therefore, we're also done with the left of 1, which was 2. So now, once this returned for the 1, we can print out the value 1 and move to the right. The right of 1 is 3. So 
I'm gonna check. Is it null? No, it's not null. No. I'm gonna move to level three. But oh, there's nothing there, so this returns immediately. I'm gonna print the value three. And then move to the right. The right of three is six. It's not null. I'm gonna move to the left. The left of six is seven. It's not null. We're gonna move to the left. There's nothing there, so this returns immediately. So we can print the value seven. Then we move to the right of seven. There's nothing there, so seven returns. And so once the left of six has returned, we can print six. And then we move to the right of six. There's nothing there, so this returns. Plus six returns. And so the three returns, the three was the right of one. And so at this point we're done. What is the time complexity? If we look at the body of the function, the amount of work we do if we do not count the recursive calls is simply of one. So the question is how many calls will there be in total? So we know for sure that this function will be called once for every node because we end up printing every single node. And every single of those calls, we do two recursive calls. So if you have n nodes in a tree, there will be a total of two n calls, n of which will be nodes, which are not null, and we end up doing a constant amount of work. So that's all of n, and the remaining n will be base cases. So that's again all of one work, n times, so that's all of n. So the total time complexity will be all of n. What about the space complexity? Space complexity will depend on how big will the call stack grow. So in this case, we can keep moving to the left and to the right as long as we don't hit a leaf node. So this, in the worst case, will simply be the height of the tree. So therefore, the space complexity is simply off age.